Good evening to everybody. Let's get to Job chapter 21. Continuing on this course of not doctrinally studying through the book of Job anymore, but just kind of preaching uh, certain verses. And tonight we're going to look at the 21st chapter. We're looking at verses 7 through 15 tonight. It's so difficult. If, if any of you are like me and you listen to a number of different messages other than, you know, just your pastor, you're listening and you're getting... A uh, couple, two, three messages a week besides the ones that you get from pastor or whatever and they begin to all blend. But if you remember from a couple of weeks ago now, uh, we looked at what Zophar, there's a name for you, Zophar had to say and we turned it into a sermon on what I called hellfire preaching. And we just preached on hell. And I know, like I said, we're, you know, we're dealing with the choir here the Born Again Choir, so um, you don't really need to hear on hell anymore, but I know the messages go out on YouTube and, and pastors don't preach on hell and sin anymore and uh, it needs to be done. I would, well, hopefully that would, yeah, that would be the case. But Zophar's approach was that, well, wicked men get punished. It's pretty simple, right? I mean, we expect that, right? Um, but have you ever felt like wicked men don't get punished? Uh huh. That's now going to be the approach Job is going to take in his response to what Zophar said in the previous chapter. So let's go again to chapter 21. And we're looking at verses 7 through 15. And tell me if this doesn't ring a bell for you. He says, Wherefore do the wicked live, become old, yea, are mighty in power? Their seed is established in their sight with them, and their offspring before their eyes. Their houses are safe from fear, neither is the rod of God upon them. Their bull gendereth and faileth not, their cow calveth and casteth not her calf. They send forth their little ones like a flock, and their children dance. They take the timbrel and harp and rejoice at the sound of the organ. They spend their days in wealth and in a moment go down to the grave. Therefore they say unto God, Depart from us, for we desire not the knowledge of thy ways. What is the Almighty that we should serve him? And what profit should we have if we pray unto him? So, I mean, we've all felt this way, right? So let's pray, and, and uh, the first few verses I'm just going to kind of hit you with without a lot of verses to back it up, and then towards the end we'll slow down a little bit. Father, please help us uh, to get whatever it is you want us to get tonight. Lord, just hearing the testimony um, of Gabrielle, Lord, we're preaching on the deep, and for whatever reason, she was convicted. Um, and so, Lord, I just, I love that, because as much as I, I want to try to prepare a sermon just right, and to say things and word things just right, without you, it really doesn't matter. It's just an outline, they're just words. But with you, Lord, and not in the power and might of man, but in the power and might of your spirit, you can speak to us in mighty ways. And so I pray that tonight, for those who are here, those who listen on YouTube, that you would speak directly to the hearts of the people through your word and be glorified in it all, we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, beginning with verse seven again. We read, Wherefore do the wicked live? Become old, yea, are mighty in power. It's a great question. Certainly not untrue. I want you to look at um, 2 Chronicles. I need to get there myself. Keep your place here. 2 Chronicles 33. I want to show you something here. We'll look at the first nine verses. All right, ready? Manasseh was 12 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 50 and 5 years in Jerusalem. So that's, a lot, that's a long time to be king, right? But did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, like unto the abominations of the heathen whom the Lord had 
cast out uh, before the children of Israel. For he built again the high places which Hezekiah his father had broken down, and he reared up altars for Balaam. He made groves and worshipped all the host of heaven and served them. Also he built altars in the house of the Lord, whereof the Lord had said in Jerusalem, uh, shall my name be forever. And he built altars for all the host of heaven in the two courts of the house of the Lord. And he caused the children to pass through the fire in the valley of the son of Hinnom. He's killing his own children. Also he observed times and used enchantment, enchantments and used witchcraft and dealt with familiar spirit, with a familiar spirit. He had devils around him that he consulted. And with wizards, he wrought much evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. And he set a carved image, the idol which he had made in the house of God. Are you hearing me now? He carved an idol and put it into a church, if you will. Boy, I wonder what religion does that. <laughs> Of which God had said to David and to Solomon, his son, In this house and in Jerusalem, which I have chosen before all the tribes of Israel, will I put my name forever. Neither will I any more remove the foot of Israel from out of the land which I have appointed for your fathers, so that they will take heed to do all that I have commanded them according to the whole law and statutes and the ordinances of the hand of Moses. So Manasseh uh, made Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to err and to do worse than the heathen whom the Lord had destroyed before the children of Israel. And just stop there. The reign of Manasseh was 55 years. He was the worst king in Judah's history. Maybe not in Israel's history, that's probably Ahab. But he, well, I should say Jezebel, King Jezebel. <laughs> right? Boy, where is that mirrored now, too, in our own American politics? Um, but uh, so 55 years, worst king in Judah's history. Why him? Why did he get to reign in Judah over Jerusalem the longest of any other king? Compare that with 2 Chronicles. You know what? 2 Chronicles, I'll read it for you in case you lost your spot there. But in the 27th chapter, let me just read the first two verses for you. Jotham was 20 and 5 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 16 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name also was Jerusha, the daughter of Zadok, and he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. According to all that his father Uzziah did, howbeit he entered not into the temple of the Lord, and the people did yet corruptly. So wicked Manasseh, 55 years, righteous Jotham, 16. Come in, have you ever felt this way? It's not fair. This isn't fair. This isn't right. This is not equity. Sure, come on, listen. You're not hiding it from me. All right? And you're not hiding it from the Lord. We've all thought at times, Lord, what are you doing? Verse 8, back in Job. Say, wait a minute, I was expecting you to give us an answer now. That's at the end. <laughs> Honestly, brothers and sisters, I wish I could give you the answer that would always make you feel good about God's ways. I can't. Verse 8, I'm going to try tonight. But I know that even knowing what I know, it's still difficult at times. Verse 8. Their seed is established in their sight with them and their offspring before their eyes. So uprises the next generation, spoiled through the riches of the conveniences that were afforded them by their rich, snobbish parents, unthankful, unyielding, implacable. That's the verse. Let's keep reading. Verse 9. Their houses are safe from fear. Neither is the rod of God upon them. Large homes with walls surrounding the property, protected by security cameras and armed security guards. Within those walls, they're safe to do all manner of wickedness during all hours and all of the day and all hours of the night. God is not in their thoughts, let's be honest. They have no guilt, no fear of God before their eyes. And yet they're allowed to continue on seemingly with the blessing of God Almighty upon them. And the reason we would say the blessing of God, because his spankings aren't on them. So wait a minute. What? I know some righteous people, man. Their lives are difficult. 
And then there's a lot of unrighteous people and their lives are peaches and cream. Verse 10. Their bull gendereth and faileth not, their cow calveth and casteth not her calf. What does that have to do with the price of tea in China? Well, it's business is good. Sales are up, costs are down, the stock market is on the rise and they're fully vested. They may, they, they're making eat them great again. <laughs> verse, <laughs> verse 11. They send forth their little ones like a flock and their children dance. They just keep making babies. No reproductive problems here. Lots of, lots of making babies. Yeah, they don't even need them anymore. They're willing to kill them, get rid of them. And you got people who can't have them, begging to have them, cost $40,000. Why, why, why does it cost $40,000 to adopt and four hundred dollars to abort? Yeah. Something not right. Something's not right. It shouldn't cost you anything to adopt. That someone ought to give you something. No money to Planned Parenthood. Start getting four, give $400 to the people who adopt. One sinful generation produces another sinful generation that is twofold more the child of hell than the previous. Don't believe me? Just keep watching every generation. And man, look at the verse. They can party. See that? Verse 11, they dance, dance in the night away. The club owner celebrates when they come walking in. He gives them free drinks because their very presence brings in more patrons. It's true. I was, there were years ago, your pastor was not always a saint, okay? Years ago, I was in a karaoke business in a bar and The Rock came in with another, a couple professional wrestlers came in and of course, everyone whispering in their ears, place packed right in. Well, of course they're giving the rock free drinks. Let the good times roll. That's, you know, dance floor gives way to their pedicured toenails and baby soft heels. Yeah, a little bit of sarcasm here, but there's a reason. I'm just siding with Job right now. I'm going through his, he's just, this is how he's looking at it. Like, this is not right. This isn't right. Verse 12, they take the timbrel and harp and rejoice at the sound of the organ. Man, they've even got talent to play music. They sing like the birds, they jam like the beetles. Beauty and talent wrapped up in their pampered little bodies. Remember what John said when he saw the whore in Revelation? And I wondered after her with great admiration. This is the Apostle John who saved, seeing heaven, and then sees the whore and goes, She's good looking. Wow. There's a lure to this thing. Now, the lure is on the flesh. Let's keep reading, verse 13. They spend their days in wealth and in a moment go down to the grave. So from beginning of days to the end, man, what a life. And when it does come time for the soul's departure, it's a lightning fast heart attack in the middle of a catnap while lying in a hammock on their two acre lot behind those security fences on a beautiful sunny day, 75 degrees and sunny, while Joe Walsh's Life's Been Good plays on in the background on their $2,000 stereo system. So, what do we do? Be jealous? Bible asks in Psalm 4.2, how long will ye love vanity? So, verses 14 and 15. Now we're going to slow down. I'm going to take, take this in. Verses 14 and 15, we're just going to... Last couple of verses for tonight, but we're just going to slow it down. Verse 14, therefore they say unto God, depart from us, for we desire not the knowledge of thy ways. What is the Almighty that we should serve him? And what profit should we have if we pray unto him? Why would I need to pray unto him? I don't have anything that I need. 
It's not raw. It's not a bad thing, save person, to be in need. It humbles us and it draws us nigh unto God. And being nigh unto God is far better than being far. It's true. It doesn't always feel that way. Job concludes by saying, these people have no interest in God because God has allowed them to live life to the fullest without their ever having need of him. And I would ask, is this true? It is. At least it can, it can appear to be from time to time. But what's the problem with Job's assessment? Go to Ecclesiastes 1. I've already revealed it, but I want you to see it. Ecclesiastes 1 and verse 14. Ecclesiastes 1.14 says, I have seen all the works that are done under the sun, and behold, all is vanity and vexation of spirit. So Job's approach is like reprobate Solomon at the end of his days, very short-sighted. And his philosophy gives no regard for life after the sun. Everything is about life under the sun and that perspective. We need to be considering life after the sun. And I don't mean S-O-N, I mean the S-U-N. That's going away one day. There will be no need of it. Which we'll talk about Genesis this week. Let there be light. Go to Luke chapter 16. We've got a similar story here. And we'll note a couple doctrinal similarities. You know the story. Luke 16, beginning in verse 19. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously how many days? Every day. This is the wicked man Job was complaining about. Life's not fair, Lord. These guys got it. They've got it all. Okay, verse 20. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores. Job, full of sores. Lazarus, full of sores. Don't miss the connection. Job is a type of who? The Jew in the tribulation. This poor man in this parable that Jesus is teaching now, he's teaching to his nation about his nation. Lazarus is the nation of Israel. They're in the, what's going on in this life under the sun? It's misery for them. They're heading right for Jacob's trouble. Their end will be all right, though. Look at verse 21. And desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table, moreover the dogs came and licked his sores. By the way, note that dogs as well as the Lord inserts that in there. Dogs would be the Gentiles. Gentiles aggravating poor Lazarus. In this life, while he's on this planet, he's, get, he's getting beat up by the Gentiles. You've got to note this stuff. Lord just, he just hides little things in there for us to discover. But to go just with the story that we're looking at in the inspirational study, verse 21, hey, can I, can I get a scrap of what that wicked man has in abundance? Just a scrap, please. Something to fall from his table. He lives sumptuously every day. Can't I get a scrap? I mean, come on, Lord. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? That was asked of him, Genesis 18, 25. Come on, Lord. We're expecting a little more out of you. You are God, after all. Sure doesn't appear that way sometimes, if we're honest, like he's being fair. 
Pastor, you're borderlining on blasphemy. I'm just being real. This isn't blasphemy. I have nothing but honor and love and reverence for my Lord and my Savior. But life under the sun, if that's our perspective, is going to be one disappointment after the other. Existence should not be bound up in life under the sun. Not for a saved person. Verse 22. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. Note the order. This is Job's complaint. Who died first? Who had a shorter life? The beggar. This ain't right. Foul! Unfair! Lord! God! You're unjust! But his life wasn't great. And if your perspective is spiritual, praise the Lord, he's no longer a beggar. I'm glad it was short. See, again, this is just a matter of how do you view it? How do you view it? So, and let me ask you this. Did the rich man die? Yeah. There is a vanity which is done upon the earth that there be just men unto whom it happeneth according to the work of the wicked. Again, there be wicked men to whom it happeneth according to the work of the righteous. I said that this also is vanity. Ecclesiastes 8.14. What's he talking about? Death. Happens to the wicked. Happens to the righteous. Everyone will die. It is appointed unto man once to die, and after this, the judgment. The wicked, the righteous. Because for, for as wicked as you think um, you, or you might think that person to be or as righteous as you might think that you are, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, Romans 3.23. Look at verses 23 and 24 of Luke. And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeing, seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his boom, bosom, and he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I am tormented in this flame. Question for you. Who do you think wants to change positions now? Yeah. Who's got the walls around them now? And who wants to get into that walled city now? Now Lazarus is in paradise and the other guy's in torment and he wants to get into the city and he wants to get in and lay in the hammock and be in peace in paradise. He ain't getting in. Verse 25, But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things, but now he is comforted and thou art tormented. There's no reason to envy the wicked. This life was unfair. Just kill that. That's what it is. This life was unfair to Lazarus. This life. Unfair to Lazarus. And seemed to favor the rich man. Did it not? Let me say it again. Don't envy the wicked. This life was unfair to Lazarus. This life seemed to favor the rich man in this life. But you know what Jesus said? Verily, verily, they have, present tense, their reward. Lazarus will, future tense, have his reward. Go over to Ecclesiastes 8, look at verse 10. Let's look at a couple few verses to close this out for tonight. I understand Job's complaint, but it's short sighted. Verse 10 And so I saw the wicked buried 
who had come and gone from the place of the holy, and they were forgotten in the city where they had so done. This also, or this is also vanity. Again, perspective. Because just when you think, like a Billy Joel, that only the good die young, then there's a funeral for a wicked person too. It will come. If life appears unfair, let's remember that we do not see the lives of all eight billion people on this planet. None of us do. Our perspective is very small, globally, and it's very selfish spiritually. Verse 11, because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. Therefore, the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. Listen, very few people are going to murder if the moment they're convicted, they're killed. Yeah. Yeah. I'm you want to cut down the murder rate? That's how you do it. Amen. That's, how you, that's how you cut down all crime. You literally punish it according to the way God told you to punish it. But, that's why prison doesn't really rehabilitate. Not when you're given three squares and an education and a training room and television. and They have everything that you have in your home that you have to work for. Yeah. And more that you can't afford. Why would I? I'm, man, so, you know, if, if, you're, if that's of your heart, that's of your character, then... Life can be deceptive. Look at verse 11 um, again. Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. Deceptive. Therefore the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. Our judgment is flawed. And while you who fear God wonder at why he allows what he allows from the wicked people, let's remember that our God is long-suffering and is willing for space to repent. That wicked person, they're living a long, long life. Oh, he's long suffering. See, the perspective is, no, send that wicked person to hell. Why? That's the wrong spirit. Let them live longer that they may repent. Now, I used Manasseh as an example. Do you know if you would have kept reading, you know what you would have read in chapter 33? His repentance. The end of his days, there was repentance. The Lord, this man was, I mean, he was about as wicked as it comes. But the man repented. Why did he let him be on that throne for that long? Well, the long is long suffering. It's long suffering. If it's not fair to you, you have the wrong spirit. Because what awaits a man who dies in his sins without Christ and without hope even if he lives 150 years in complete bliss, right. is nothing but torment. Right. So it's nothing compared to the sentence that it, of eternity that's going to await him. Be thankful he had 150 years. Verse 12 and 13, though, the sin, though a sinner do evil an hundred times and his days be prolonged, yet surely I know that it shall be well with them that fear God which fear before him, but it shall not be well with the wicked, neither shall he prolong his days, which are as a shadow, because he feareth not before God. See what he's saying in verse 12, even if they prolong their days, it's not going to go well with them. And then in verse 13 it says, well, neither shall he prolong his days. That's the eternal perspective. The first one's the earthly perspective, the second one's the eternal perspective. This life is not the end. This life is just the beginning. For those who have put their trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, their sorrow will one day permanently end. And for those who have not put their trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, their sorrow will one day permanently begin. Why hasten that day? So somewhere between Zophar's assessment of life and Job's assessment of life lies God's judgment on the lives of each and every one of us as he measures and sees fit and sees the end from the beginning. 
And the correct spirit would dictate that we should not envy the wicked. There's nothing to envy. We should pity. And attempt to give them the gospel. Don't withhold it because they're driving in a Jaguar. Give it because they're driving in a Jaguar. Because it's very difficult for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. They don't need them. Their future's going to be torment. They will not see the truth. So again, please don't be jealous. And I know it's hard. Let's have an eternal perspective. Let's not have a life under the sun perspective. They have their reward, and that may be all they ever, ever have. So, little eternal perspective for tonight. Amen. I'm going to ask for uh, Deacon Joe. Will you close us in prayer, please?